From Tech TV, welcome to Panorama. I'm your hostess, Gada Hamadani. Chaldeans and Assyrians, who are they and where they come from? What's their contribution to civilization? To shed light on these people, I'd like to welcome my guest, Bishop Bawai Soro. Bishop Bawai was born in Kirkuk, Iraq, has a master's degree in systematic theology, Catholic University of America and Doctorate in Sacred Theology, St. Thomas University, Angelicum in Rome. Welcome, Bishop Saro. Thank you, Rada. Good yeah. to be here. Thank you. Uh, I would like to, you know, like, uh, to give us a little bit you know, about your life. I know that you moved a lot before you, before you end up here in Canada. So can you tell us a little bit about your journey, please? I'm basically a native of Iraq, uh, grew up uh, in Baghdad in two neighbor to neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was 18 years old, I left with my family to immigrate in 1973. I left uh, to immigrate to Australia. Uh, we went to Lebanon mm -hmm. through where many Christians, Iraqi Christians would leave to other countries. At that time, the civil war started in Iran, in, in, um, in Lebanon, and everything ceased and changed. After two and a half years, I ended up in the United States as a refugee. And I've remained there since uh, the mid-70s in the United States. Uh, I worked, uh, I studied, uh, I returned back uh, to the formation of priesthood and I became a priest in the Assyrian church mm -hmm. because I, I was born in the Assyrian church and baptized. Mm -hmm. um, in 1982 I was made uh, a priest in the Assyrian church and my first assignment mm -hmm. from America was here in Canada. I was a pastor for uh, two and a half years I served, actually I resided in Mississauga and served uh, the Toronto greater area and also served many communities uh, throughout Canada. I was the only uh, Assyrian and Chaldean uh, priest at that time for all Iraqis. So I had the joy and the blessing to visit uh, everyone from Vancouver to Montreal and mainly remained here. So after that, in 1984, I was uh, called back to the United States and made a bishop for Western United States. And uh, I remained there uh, for, 20, for the next 20 years, and again, on and off mm -hmm. on different missions, different studies, uh, engaged in many dialogues, activities, church assignments. Uh, until uh, the uh, 2005, where uh, I felt I had uh, another calling mm -hmm. that uh, I saw the maturity, the spiritual and theological maturity that came to me. I felt I was being called to seriously consider uh, uh, uniting, uh, coming in full communion with the Catholic Church. So, uh, unfortunately, there were some disputes uh, between myself and the Assyrian Church. But after a few years, these disputes uh, were resolved um, uh, peacefully, uh, some of them in the courts, because there were some um, properties involved. Uh, thank God everything was returned to the Assyrian church, myself, and almost uh, a thousand Assyrian family. We joined uh, the Chaldean church and we became Catholics. So Chaldean right now is not ethnicity. It's like it's religion. It's the Catholic. Is that why we, because you know, it's like mm. Assyrian and Chaldeans are it's like, they're supposed to be two ethnic groups originally. And mm. yeah. So, yes, it's a little bit complicated, especially for the people who do not uh, much know about the history. Mm -hmm. So uh, le let me begin with the topic of yes. and explaining these, and then maybe later on I mm -hmm. can uh, comment on my journey uh, sure. till I come back to Canada again as a bishop. 
so we are all people uh, that we, we come from Iraq, mm -hmm. basically. And Iraq is one of the most ancient civilizations in the world. Mm -hmm. um, it has people who lived there for thousands and thousands of years. We start with the Akkadian and Shumerians who, who really founded uh, language. Uh, and the, we're talking about 5,000 years before Christ, where uh, language uh, and cuneiform primitive languages and uh, primitive writing was founded and they had a great love for learning especially the Sumerians so they began their vo they felt that their vocation more than anything else was to teach and to learn that's why we see as history develops in that land and human needs are met through the expansion of agriculture and um, opening waters uh, to bring water from rivers uh, to areas where uh, they did not have rain, um, uh, people began growing and clustering into new centers. So we have the emergence of uh, the Babylonian Empire where people began uh, coming to Babylon and Babylon became uh, a center for culture, for learning, uh, for religion, uh, and for science. So gradually the uh, Babylonian empire is formed um, and they, they had many uh, uh, contribution, as I said, in religion and mathematics and astrology and the very well-known uh, law, uh, the, uh, the King Hammurabi who developed his own code of law that is until today considered at, as one of the most fundamental uh, basis of, uh, of human law. Uh, very primitive, but uh, very original and has its own character. Uh, trade and commerce uh, and uh, all these aspects, especially astrology and uh, 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 the idea of literature. And we hear from the Babylon Babylonians that they had the epic of Gilgamesh, yes. from which a lot of uh, material has been borrowed by the Jewish mm -hmm. authors who began writing thousands of years later, who began writing the Jewish scriptures, the, the different books of the Old Testament, and they borrowed a lot of stories and concepts in order to reformulate them and put them in the, in the Jewish Bible, but adding their own revelation, their own new insights as to who God is. Mm -hmm. So in Iraq, we have the Babylonians, and after that, we have the development of another uh, center, which is Nineveh. Mm -hmm. And there, uh, the land was called Assyria. And there, people began gathering in that center, and the Assyrian empire was gradually formed and it was an empire known just like Babel was known for its uh, culture languages and religion Assyria became became more known of its military also uh, love of literature the library of uh, Ashurbanipal was a huge library uh, even when uh, books were written on uh, on, on tablets of, uh, of clay. They will print it in cuneiform. Uh, uh, and he had military power. Uh, and uh, he began uh, bringing... The Assyrians began having a sense of mission because they have reached a high level of thought they began having a sense, what do we do with all this knowledge that we have? 
with all this insight, with all these principles that we know, what do we do with them? They said, we will take them to other people. Mm -hmm. And they began thinking outside the box of their parameter, the two rivers, mm -hmm. Eu Euphrates and Tigris. So they began going to different lands and invading them and teaching them. And who resisted against them? They were very brutal uh, and they s sort of destroyed uh, any opposition. Uh, but with that, they began uh, still in their land uh, developing uh, science uh, uh, and, and, and literature uh, uh, and, and they were a great empire. So in Iraq you have two centers, Babylon in the middle and Nineveh and Assyria in the, in the north. And the last decade, uh, the last century of their history before they are totally uh, uh, give up the rule of Mesopotamia, Another group is, is raised and uh, come to power, another dynasty, and these are the Chaldeans. Mm -hmm. The Chaldean specialty was mainly in astrology, astronomy, and religion, and monitoring the stars. Uh, uh, they had, uh, uh, who were people of the mind. They were people who had insight. That's why in Christianity, and really they are the closest to the event that Jesus arrives, the Chaldeans are the cl closest. That's why in the Bible, in the Gospel, there is a story of a star that guides the world to the newly born Savior in Bethlehem, yes. in Israel, in Palestine. And that star comes from the east. It comes from East Mesopotamia, from, comes from the Far East to the Middle East, and then it comes to Jerusalem. And who follows that star? Wise men from the east. Who are the people who were monitoring for centuries the stars? They will the Babylonian and the Chaldeans. So this land has had so much knowledge, so much mm -hmm. gift from God that even God reveals to them the arrival of his son. And this is one of the biggest, biggest prophecies that man and culture as a whole can contribute to. And that was before any of the three religions? That was... Um, um, basically, uh, the first of the three religions mm -hmm. that you are talking about, Judaism, Christianity, and then Islam, that mm -hmm. come, uh, that religions that speak uh, mm -hmm. of uh, monotheistic religions, that speak of one God. Uh, Judaism was formed, yes, they started before all uh, religion. Judaism, it starts from one person from Mesopotamia, mm -hmm from Ur of the Chaldeans, uh, Abraham, that feels he, he cannot worship a statue that his neighbor made it two days ago, or his father. It's like, how can I worship as God something that was made by man? Mm -hmm. So he breaks it. He begins having this sense, this vocation, this awareness that tells him you have a calling. And indeed, he was being called by God mm -hmm. to begin knowing the God of heaven, the God of Abraham and his children, who ultimately is revealed totally, according to Christian theology, is revealed in the person of Jesus Christ. But you're right, religion, these three religions start from the very Mesopotamia, from these very great cultures that invested so much effort, time in developing languages and promoting teaching and in reflection and in all this 
uh, branches of signs all over in order to be able at the right time to give their fruit to the whole world. Okay, and what is the situation of these groups right now? Ha. Huh. Unfortunately, uh, of course, your question jumps over yeah. uh, a great period. Uh, it jumps maybe like 2,000 years. But you can, yeah, you can elaborate on those 2,000. But, you know, it's like my, I was wondering, you know, what yeah. happened. Yeah, so really to understand what is going on, we have to understand at least what went on after Christianity, after the arrival of Christ. But before the arrival of Christ, what is very significant on the current identity of who the Assyrians and the Chaldeans are, mm -hmm. they really are not different people. They are the same people. But because Iraq, Mesopotamia, the land between two rivers, is so rich, has so many uh, empires, local empires, uh, indigenous empires that rose and fell, uh, uh, today the same people, some of them focus their identity uh, more on Babylon and on the Chaldeans and some other recognize more the northern part they emphasize on uh, Assyria and Nineveh and uh, the tendencies the contribution that the Assyrians have but regardless of who they are where they come all these people speak the same language come from the same land have the same religion Christianity uh, true, uh, church-wise, they are divided, mm -hmm. but that transcends all our customs, our thinking, our mentality. It is literally one and the same. Today, probably we are more separated than <coughs> before because when people separate, they sort of tend to develop different social habits, uh, spiritual habits, but this is natural uh, in any religion when you have people in the, in, of the mountains, mountains think and behave a little bit different than people from the plains. So uh, to the Assyrians and the Chaldeans. Okay. If they are from, you know, it's like same religion, uh, from same origin. Yes. So we see difference, you know, if you allow me to say, it's like, um, it's like the skin color, you know, it's yes. like the appearance. Why the appearance differ? Yes. Yeah, yeah. like, uh, and which is a phenomena yeah. that can be set in, in many nations and groups mm -hmm. in many countries. Why the same people who say we are the same nation, the same language, the same country, but they have different 20, 30 groups of features. Well, uh, simply because there is no one pure uh, race that has continued from the beginning, because people mix. Mm -hmm. People, uh, empires rise and empires fall, fell, and uh, uh, some people uh, intermarry, some people remain isolated. And in fact, if, you, if any group of people remains isolated, genetically it cannot survive. Because marrying from the same people, the gene pool becomes weak and uh, receptive to any diseases, does not have the immune, strong immune system that can only be brought by bringing other type of genes into that pool. So necessarily people intermarry. And when you bring people from different geographies, with those genes come the different uh, uh, features. Uh, and today there is uh, an experiment that is being experimented uh, that uh, all of us can have access to which is uh, the uh, DNA uh, ancestry. ancestry. So one company is Ancestry DNA Ancestry or Ancestry DNA, uh, which ma it makes its uh, test available to people by paying a small fee. 
I was surprised when I had that ancestry. Uh, uh, I found out that I am 55% uh, Caucasian. Mm -hmm. I am 20% Persian. Mm -hmm. And uh, 75 and 25 percent, I am Middle Easterner. Middle and Eastern, Middle Eastern. <laughs> yeah, it is a wide category. They they mm -hmm. classify Middle East from the Jewish people in uh, Israel all the way to Western Iran, composing all the uh, uh, people, the Arab people between these two, between Iran and uh, the Jewish people. So it means somewhere, in my, and, and genes do not uh, decay, they do not change, they remain sure. the same. Yes. Uh, that means my, uh, if you trace my, my genealogy, I have many people who have come into marriage, yeah. into my lineage. And I think this is the story of every human being especially after today, after this immigration and this freedom and this travel, this communication, there is no pure race. Uh, once a reporter, when some trouble were happening in the Middle East, I used to live in Washington, D.C. I was interviewed by a reporter, uh, a young woman uh, from New York. I was in Washington. In my conversation with her, uh, she mentioned something. She gave me a definition. What is a nation? Mm -hmm. or, uh, she said, why are you so sure that you are genetically? I said, I am an Assyrian and I am sure of that. And uh, I am who I am. And this is what the people say. This was maybe 30 years ago. Uh, she said, I'll give you another definition. Why don't you think about it? I said, yes. She said, uh, nation is a state of feeling. It depends what do you feel you are. Of course, that feeling, who I am, has to have some basis, some element, some grounds. I know Syriac, I know Arabic, I come from Iraq, my parents are Christians, my neighbor is, is Chaldean, my parents are Assyrians, my church has a Church of the East liturgy. Uh, so putting all these components together, my options into giving a cultural designation for me, becomes limited. I become either Chaldean or Assyrian. Mm -hmm. For sure, I'm not an Arab yeah. because in that area, Arabs are Muslims. I'm not a Muslim. Mm -hmm. I'm not a Kurdish because Kurdish have different languages. They, ha they have different ancestors. I'm not a Persian because Persians have their own particularities. I'm not European. I'm not Spanish. I'm not Greek. So, uh, however, to claim oneself uh, to become attached is really something in your mind. Okay. It's not because of your genes. Your genes can be a mixture. That's true. Your genes can come from many parts. And I think ancestry, DNA, has revealed the secret to us. Mm -hmm. I was shocked to know I have 20% of my genes is yeah. Persian. I totally look now different yeah. on the Persian people. That's true. Yeah. And we still have the same features, a little bit. Yes. Feature, yeah. Yes. So, so you become from that area, but true. you call yourself so and so. That's very true. Okay. Thank you very much, and up until next time, have a good night.